Hi all, in this lecture we'll talk about what is reference data, what are the challenges faced by organizations with respect to reference data, how do we manage reference data, and what are the key capabilities one should be looking for in a good reference data management solution. So if we start with reference data, it is data used to classify or categorize other data. Now it is known by many other terms like drop-down values, list of values, uh, code value pairs, etc. They are static or very slowly changing in their nature. Although reference data is rarely changed, still those changes need to be propagated to the downstream systems, uh, either in real time or in batch mode and synchronized across the entire organization. Now, most enterprise applications use reference data to classify your master domains like products, customers, suppliers, vendors, locations, etc. Everyone would have seen reference data by now. When you try to fill in a web form or when you try to fill in uh, your employment details anywhere, you, you always are encountered with reference data in terms of drop downs or a very limited set of values that hardly change. Reference data may originate either internally, like let's say you have got 100 systems, they all might be managing their own reference data. So those will be considered as internal reference data, or you can still be um, given external reference data where you acquire data from other organizations, um, or there are mergers and acquisitions happening, or let's say you get data in your web channel from aggregators. So you still have to consume those external sources uh, reference data and have that mapping so that that reference data from the external system is translated into what your organization understands. Now reference data is not just the data mappings. It involves complex hierarchies, versioning, auditing, approval process, and a lot more things. Examples of reference data uh, postal codes, uh, country codes, uh, transaction codes, cost centers, financial hierarchies, um, currencies, organizational unit types, customer segments, and many more. So going to the next slide. So what are the challenges that organizations face with reference data? So the biggest challenge I would say would be that different applications maintain their reference data in a siloed manner. So different applications rely on different variations of code sets to define the same thing. For example, CRM and ERP application might use different country code types. So one could be using ISO 2 codes and the other one could be using ISO 3. And there, there are many examples where different applications uh, have different marital status codes or gender codes, etc. Now organizations reconcile this data as well as track any changes to it using ad hoc and error prone manual methods. Without a central reference data management solution, it's very hard for organizations to track any changes to all the applications because if there's no governance, any system can do the change in its own time and space and then there would be many more challenges that would be coming up front where integrations will start failing, your reporting will go wrong, etc. And that is actually our third point where reports meant for internal and external audiences that pull data from multiple applications and departments can be inaccurate because let's say one system says it would be um, my UK country code is GB. The other could say it's UK and the third system could say it's GBR. So how many combinations you have to put to get the, the consolidated data for United Kingdom. So you need to be aware of all those different variations across different systems. Otherwise your reports will give, a, give you false results. When heavily regulated industries such as financial services or healthcare provide inaccurate reports to regulators, this leads to heavy fines and uh, reputational damage. This is also contributing to poor data quality. So you cannot have uh, proper data quality or enterprise data quality programs without having your reference data aligned or governed properly. Organizations do not represent reference data consistently at an enterprise level. So as we have talked about that every system maintain its own reference data, they all kind of are the master of their own reference data. 
So we do not know at the enterprise level what are my categories or reference data category that I want to master and what are the values belonging to those categories. Moving to the next slide. Now let's talk about what is reference data management. Because of the challenges that we have seen in the previous slide, uh, there are very difficult uh, challenges that can come up because of uh, the data being shared across different domains and every application managing their own reference data. So that is why reference data management is very important because it provides you a proper governance, uh, versioning control and custom hierarchies. So when we talk about governance, it says that whenever any change happens in reference data management solution, it has to be done by proper approvals if it is needed. And once it is done, it has to go through all the downstream systems, all the consuming system at the same time uh, so that they all can, so all the downstream systems can consume it at the same time so that integration works and you know every other smaller bit which tends to get ignored will be taken care of. So the governance gives you that end-to-end -end process of managing reference data at a central point and then propagating it to the entire organization. Versioning control where you need to know, okay, let's say your country code GB has now changed to UK in ISO 2. So you need to know till what point, uh, from what point it started uh, and till what point it retired. So till what point GB was active and from which date or time UK has started uh, being active. So this that is versioning control and obviously based on uh, business requirements, you might have different needs for custom hierarchy. So you should be able to configure that within RDM because different stakeholders might need to view different hierarchies uh, for the same data. Reference data must be defined against business terms uh, and set against rules. So there should be certain rules as well to define the business uh, reference data, like the standards uh, or no nomenclatures, etc. They should be having uh, flexibility to create hierarchies and sharing data for collaboration via workflow processes or approval processes and any changes monitored should be happening. Now reference data is everywhere and must be managed so that systems across an organization operate in synchronization with interoperable accurate data. And without this management, reference data will just be sitting in siloed applications uh, within an organization and typically defined and managed differently from application to application. And once you have different applications managing their own reference data, this will tend to bring many errors and you know very difficult to map it um, at the higher level because and the cost involved would be very, very high. So, if we go to the last slide where we talk about what are the key capabilities of RDM or reference data management solution. So the first one would be ability to map reference data. Now, let's say you have defined your canonical reference data sets um, at the enterprise level. And now your RDM hub should be able to manage the mappings between different systems and that enterprise level uh, reference data. So for example, let's say you have got gender and within gender you have got M and F as codes. Now CRM represents M as M01 and uh, ERP represents it as uh, M001. Now this mapping of you know M01 from CRM and M001 from ERP to your enterprise level uh, gender M code has to be present in your reference data to manage the integration between different systems. Second would be your data model. Your data model should be extendable. So let's say you do not have any hierarchical reference data at present uh, in your reference data model, but your model should be capable uh, to cope up with that in case in future you have a need to bring in uh, hierarchical reference data. Also, let's say you have acquired a new business or you have started a new line of business, um, then your reference data would be different across different lines of business as well. So you should be able to extend your model for different products, line of business, brands, etc. 
third is giving the flexibility um, to the end user where we say that RDM solution should be designed with business user in mind. Um, we should be providing them um, proper web screens and user interfaces so that they can easily manage and you know import or export reference data with minimal need to go to IT uh, teams. Fourth is based on requirements, different hierarchies um, of the similar reference data uh, should be present. Um, so reference code tables can either be flat list or hierarchies. Hierarchical structure is a key aspect of reference data that needs to be managed in addition to the values and mappings relationships. So you could have your country, counties, uh, and cities uh, hierarchy. Uh, and you can also have different um, hierarchy where you can say I want to see my categories and all the uh, enterprise level values belonging to that category and also the mapping of different systems uh, in a single hierarchy so it will all depend on your business requirements next would be connectivity um, so your RDM solution should have a way to share that data which is being managed in RDM to all the consuming systems which which actually has that reference codes uh, belonging to uh, their own reference data. Now there would be different ways for, for this. You can either push it real time or systems can come in via APIs um, and get the reference data refreshed within their own systems. So th this RDM solution should be having that capability to expose the data um, for different systems to consume it. Import and export. RDM solution should be easily giving the flexibility for users to export the data in Excel, CSVs, or XMLs, etc., and import it as well. So let's say for countries, you wouldn't be building all the countries one by one. There should be a way to import all the countries um, via Excel or CSV in that RDM solution. Now versioning support is basically where we define what value or record is active till what point. So again taking the country example let's say gb change to uk so uh, business stakeholders might need to know that okay till what point gb was active and from what point uk started uh, being the country code for united kingdom and then end-to-end -end life cycle management where we define the end-to-end -end flow of governance and how do we involve governance is basically giving the right roles and permissions to the relevant data stewards and users, um, defining the approval processes so that, you know, in case they, there's any mistake while filling in the reference data, then that straight away is not being consumed by the downstream system and breaking integration. So a level of approval or review um, we can still create for, for critical reference data elements, etc. So this covers our first lecture. I'll see you in next one. Thank you.